In this lesson, we're going to talk about comparing linear models or comparing the rate of change of these linear models. Let's take a look at our first example. Timmy rides his bike some distance d in kilometers over some time t in minutes given by the following equation d equals 0.5t, or half t. Michael rides his bike at a steady rate away from his house. His distance from, his, his distance from the house over time is shown below on the graph. Who is traveling faster? How much faster is he traveling? Okay, so great ideas. Read through the problem first. Let's go back and reread it again. Tim, Timmy rides his bike some distance d in kilometers over some time t in minutes given by the following equation d equals 0.5t. So this is our first piece of crucial information. Let's concentrate on that first. So it's saying that Timmy's riding his bike at 0.5t. Now what does this mean? Well, this looks very similar to y equals mx plus b. However, this piece here, the d, is, list, is missing the b, which is a plus zero. When you have this plus zero, it means the graph is starting right at the origin. So the y-intercept is right at your origin, starting at the, starting at the coordinate zero comma zero. That's going to be very helpful for us, and we'll see that in a few, in a few minutes. So now if we concentrate on 0 0.5, that becomes my slope. So m is equal to my 0 0.5. But remember, m is also known as your, in this case, our rate of change. Okay, so slope and rate of change are exactly the same thing. So our rate of change or our slope here is equal to 0 0.5. So what does this 0 0.5 actually mean? Well, Timmy's traveling 0 0.5 kilometers per minute. I'm going to write min for minutes. So how fast is Timmy riding? 0 0.5 kilometers per minute. And we could take, now this first equation here was nice and easy for us. If it's already in slope intercept form, we could take the slope from that or the rate of change right from that equation. Now the second part, Michael rides his bike at a steady rate away from his house. The fact that it's steady, meaning it's linear, it's always at a constant speed. His distance from the house over time is shown below. So now we have a graph, and we have to find his rate of change or his slope or his speed from this graph. Now, when we find rate of change or slope, we could always use our slope formula. And if you recall, our slope formula is it going to be m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we need two coordinates here. Well, we have one coordinate highlighted here, and since the graph is starting right at the origin, I'm going to use that coordinate as well. So the two coordinates I'm going to use is one, I'm going to use 4016, and I'm going to use the coordinate 0, 0. So I'm going to use 0, comma 0, and I'm going to use the coordinate 4016. Now the 0, 0 coordinate is very nice for us because when we plug in, it's going to be a nice easy calculation. So let's take a look at this for a second. If we want to label our coordinates here, we could say, okay, this is my x1, y1, and this one here is going to be my x2, y2. Substituting in, I'm going to have 16 minus 0 over 40 minus 0, which simply just equals 16 over 40. And if we simplify 16 over 40 as a fraction, we could divide both of these by 8, we get 2 over 5, and since this is in, since our first rate of change is in a decimal form, let's convert zero, uh, 2 fifths into decimal, and we could say that's 0 0.4, and to add our units, we're going to say kilometers per minute as well. Okay, so now we have our two rates. We have our first rate, Timmy's traveling at 0 0.5 kilometers or half a kilometer per minute. And we have our second right here. Michael is riding his bike at a rate of 0 0.4 or 4 tenths of a kilometer per minute as well. The questions now become, first question, who is traveling faster? Well, we can say, simply see that, well, Timmy's riding at zero, uh, half a mile, half a kilometer per minute. Michael's riding at 4 tenths of a kilometer per minute. So who's traveling faster? We could say, Timmy is traveling faster. So Timmy wins the race on that side. How much faster is he traveling, or how much faster is Timmy traveling? Well, this becomes a simple mathematics 
simple subtraction problem, so we have 0, 0.5 or 1 half minus 4 tenths, which is equal to 0, 0.1 or 1 tenth. And now let's throw it this uh, some units. How much faster? Timley is traveling 1 tenth of a kilometer, kilometers per minute faster. And that solves the second part of the question. So again, here we're given two different options. We were given one. We were given the graph for the, uh, the I'm sorry, the y-intercept, slope-intercept form of the equation. From that slope-intercept form, very easily we were able to extract the slope or the rate of change. And the second part was we're giving the graph, and now we're able to find the rate of change through that one. All right, so our second example, two airplanes leave an airport and travel at steady speeds. The first plane's distance from the airport in miles d over time in minutes t is given by the equation. First airplane, d equals 6.9 or 6 and 9 tenths t. The second plane's distance from the airport over time is given by the graph below. So very similar to our last example. Our first equation, we have one, we have an equation here, which we're going to find the rate of change or the speed. And then we have our second equation, or which we have a graph. And we're going to find the rate of change or speed from the graph. And then the questions here are, what, find the speed of each plane. So one, two, and then which plane travels faster and by how much. All right, so let's go from our first one. So here's our first piece of information. First plane, first airplane, D equals 6.9 T. So let's take that information, D equals 6.9 T. So again, this looks very much like Y equals MX plus B, except here we don't have the Y-intercept. So that means we're starting again at the origin. So the rate of change here, or the slope, again, is going to be my 6 and 9 tenths. So we can say the first plane is traveling at 6.9 or 6 and 9 tenths, and our units, miles per minute. Miles per minute. Now let's go back and plug this in. So we got our first piece of our first answer here, 6.9 or 6 and 9 tenths miles, oh, to mi per minute. I should do mi here for miles. All right, and our second plane. So here's our first plane. Let's go for our second plane. Going from the graph, again, since we're starting at the origin, we can use our slope formula. m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now, if we're starting at the origin here, we could kind of forget about this formula in a second because our y1 and our yx1 are going to be zeros. So we're only just going to take these two points here, 5, 30, or 5, 3, and we're just going to use concentrate on these points here. So this is my x2 y2 here, so we could just say it's going to be 30 over 5, which reduces to 6, and to throw some units on there, so this plane 2 is traveling at 6 miles per minute. So our second plane here, we could fill that in as 6.0 or 6.0 miles per minute. All right, and then the question becomes, which plane travels at a faster rate and by how much? So plane, so we could say here, we want to throw some words in here. We can say plane two. Let's go into one more time. So the second plane is, oh, I'm sorry, the first plane. is traveling nine tenths of a mile per minute faster. And that will answer your last piece of information. Okay, so for our third and final example, the population of two small towns change at a steady rate over a 10 year period of time. The population of Demers is given by the equation below, where P is the population and T is the number of years since the year 2000. Population of Demers, P equals negative 40T plus 920. The population of Harworth is shown in the graph below. The question comes, find the rate of change of each, population's town, of each town's population, Demers, Harworth, and explain how each population is changing. Alright, so let's look at our first one. 
population of Demers is given by the equation where P is the population and T is the number of years since 2000. So years to, since 2000. So technically, if 2000 is right at my starting point, then every year after is going to be 2001, 2002, 2003, and so on, up until uh, 2010. So the population of Demers is given by the equation P equals negative 40T plus, two, uh, plus 920. So P equals negative 40T plus 920. So again, this is very like y equals mx plus b. This time I do have a y-intercept, uh, 920. So in the, year in the year 2000, the population was 920. Now all these numbers are made up, of course. Um, so in the year 2000, before anything else has changed, the population, let's say, was 920. And it's decreasing at about 40 people per year. So the slope or the rate of change here is going to be negative 40, and to throw some units in there, it's going to be people per year or population per year. People per year. Okay, so the population is decreasing at 40, negative 40 people per year. Now, find the rate of change of Haworth. Now, this is not starting at the origin here, so now we definitely need two values. So we're going to take the two values on the graph that are already plotted there for us, so we're going to take this first graph here, or this first point, 920, and we're going to take our second point here, 2, 1,000. All right, so let's label these two points. So we got x1, y1, and our second point, x2, y2. Let's plug into my formula, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1. I'm just going to write out the formula quickly, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Plug it in. So you got 1420 minus 1000 over, and we have 9 minus 2. So we got 420 over 7, and then 420 over 7 is equal to 60. And we can say the population of Haworth is growing at, is actually growing since it's positive of about 60 people per year. So here's our first answer. We'll take this one. So the population of Haworth is growing at the negative, it's decreasing at 40 people per year. The population here of Demerst, of Haworth, excuse me, is growing at about 60 people per year. So how to explain each population, and we could just say just that. Demerst is losing about 40 people per year from its town population since the slope is negative. Okay, so it's decreasing, so the population is decreasing 40 people per year. And Haworth, the population here, if you notice, is actually increasing at a rate of 60 people per year. Okay, so make sure you answer all the questions of what they're asking. Population, of, uh, rate of change of Demerest, rate of change of Haworth, explain the difference in each of each one of these.